Year 13, Chapter 9, Further Differentiation, Lesson 7, Implicit Differentiation, Part 2. So we're going to use what we've done in the previous lesson on how to differentiate functions that are defined implicitly. And we're going to apply this by solving a range of different questions, looking at identifying turning points of curves that have been defined in this way. Let's start with an example. So here's our example. A curve has equation x squared plus 2y squared equals 4x. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is differentiate this. And I want you to remember that we do not, under any circumstances, start by writing dy by dx equals. That would be wrong. The curve has not been identified in the format y equals. We cannot just go straight to dy by dx equals. We need to differentiate term by term implicitly where appropriate. So x squared, and remember we're differentiating with respect to x. x squared differentiates to give me 2x with respect to x. Now 2y squared, I've got to differentiate that implicitly. So it's going to be 4y dy by dx. Think back to everything you learnt in the previous lesson. And then the last part, 4x, simply differentiates to 4. I can divide through all three parts by 2. So I get x plus 2y dy by dx equals 2. And then rearranging this gives me dy by dx equals 2 minus x, all divided by 2y. So notice that the derivative is in terms of x and y. Now we're trying to identify any turning points or stationary points. So we know at any stationary points, dy by dx equals 0. So let's now set this derivative equal to 0. And of course, this then gives us 2 minus x equals 0. The numerator has got to equal 0 and then x equals 2. So that gives me the x coordinate of my turning point. What about the y coordinates? Well, I can find y coordinate or coordinates if there's more than one stationary point by substituting back into the original equation. So we're going to substitute back into x squared plus 2y squared equals 4x. x equals 2, so this gives me 4 plus 2y squared equals 8. 2y squared equals 4. y squared equals 2 y equals plus or minus 2. So this then tells me I've got two turning points. So I have x equals 2, y equals root 2, and x equals 2, y equals negative root 2. So in our second example, we're going to find the coordinates of the maximum point of this function, x cubed plus y cubed equals 3xy. So let's differentiate this with respect to x. x cubed differentiates to give me 3x squared. Now y cubed has to be differentiated implicitly, so I get 3y squared dy by dx. And on the right hand side, I'm going to split up this product here. And I'm going to use the product rule. But again, I'm not going to set up u and v and all of those ideas. I'm going to think of this part here as my u. So that's my 3x. And then I'm going to think of this part here, the y, as my v. But I'm not going to write that down. I'm just going to leave 3x alone and differentiate y and then swap over and do it the other way around. I'll leave y alone and differentiate 3x which gives me 3. So here is my differentiation. Now let's collect the terms that contain dy by dx on one side. And we can also divide through by a factor of 3. So I have y squared dy by dx minus x dy by dx. And on the right hand side, I have y subtract x squared. 
factorize. And then we get a nicely symmetrical result. dy by dx is y minus x squared over y squared minus x. Now, we know at any stationary points, which would include a maximum point, dy by dx is equal to 0. So this gives me y minus x squared over y squared minus x equals 0 which gives me y minus x squared equals 0, so y equals x squared. Notice it does not give me a specific value of x or y. It gives me the result y equals x squared. What am I going to do with that? I am going to substitute that back into the original equation of the curve. So. The original equation of the curve is x cubed plus y cubed equals 3xy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace my y with x squared. So I get x cubed plus x squared or cubed equals 3x multiplied by x squared. So what does this give me? x cubed plus x to the power of 6 equals 3x to the power of 3. So simplifying this, collecting like terms, x to the power of 6 subtract 2x cubed equals 0. Factorize x cubed, so I get x cubed minus 2 equals 0. And then this then gives me two possibilities, x equals 0 and x equals the cube root of 2, or 2 to the power of a third. Now, I'm then going to sketch the graph. And here is a sketch of the curve. Now, we can see very clearly that there is some kind of stationary point at x equals 0. You can see that dy by dx flattens out there, but it's not the point that we're looking for. It's certainly not a maximum. So we'll reject this answer here using the graph. But this other answer, x equals the cube root of 2, we can see that there is the maximum point there where the gradient would just flatten out horizontally like this. The tangent would be horizontal. So there is our maximum point and it has an x-coordinate of 2 to the power of a third. And remember, y is equal to x squared at the stationary point. So we can then just say that the y-coordinate is 2 to the power of a third squared, which is 2 to the power of 2 thirds. Let's now have a look at a series of questions involving implicit differentiation. So a curve is defined implicitly. Verify that the point 1, 1 lies on the curve. Now, verification is usually a very easy thing to do. We just need to check that the point 1, 1 lies on the curve. So if x equals 1 and y equals 1, the left-hand side of this equation would be equal to 1 squared plus 2 times 1 times ln of 1, ln of 1 being 0. So this left-hand side just equals 1. The right-hand side equals 1 squared, which is 1 as well, which implies that 1, 1 lies on the curve. Now, to find the gradient of the curve at this point, we need to differentiate. So for the second part of the question, we need to find dy by dx. So we're going to differentiate with respect to x implicitly where needed. So let's now look at the different parts of the curve. y squared will need to be differentiated implicitly. We then have a product here of 2x and ln y. So that will require implicit differentiation. It will also require the use of the product rule. So that part's going to be u. This part is going to be v. And then on the right-hand side, much more simply, we have x squared, which will just differentiate with respect to x very easily. So starting with y squared, that becomes 2y dy by dx. Now, for the next part of this, I'm going to leave 2x alone, and I'll differentiate ln of y, which becomes 1 over y dy dx. 
I then need to do it the other way around. So I differentiate 2x to give me 2, and I leave ln y alone. The right-hand side, of course, is then 2x when we differentiate it. Now, I could collect like terms here and simplify straight away to find dy by dx, or I could just actually substitute in the values x equals 1 and y equals 1, because I'm not being asked to find dy by dx in a general sense. I'm being asked to find the gradient at this point only. So I'm going to substitute in x equals 1 and y equals 1. So that then gives me 2 dy by dx plus 2 dy by dx. Now, ln of 1 is equal to 0, so this will disappear. And on the right-hand side, I simply have 2. So simplifying this, we have 4 dy by dx is equal to 2. dy by dx is equal to a half. So the gradient at the point 1, 1 is equal to a half. So a curve is defined implicitly by this equation. The point 1, 1 lies on this curve. By differentiating implicitly, show that dy by dx equals this result here. So let's differentiate this with respect to x. Oh, the first thing that I want to notice is this. So we have a composite and it's a power. It's a power function. So remember what we've talked about previously, multiply by the power, reduce the overall power by one, so it drops down to one, and then multiply by the derivative of the inner function. So we've got to differentiate x plus y with respect to x. x differentiates to one, and y differentiates to dy by dx. Done. Now on the right-hand side, we've then very simply got 4x, which differentiates to four. So we now need to simplify this and then rearrange to show that we get the result that's required. Let's divide both sides by 2 bracket x plus y. So this then gives me 1 plus dy by dx is equal to 4 over 2x plus y. And then dy by dx is equal to 2 over x plus y minus 1 which is what we were required to get to. Now verify that the curve has a stationary point at 1, 1. Now, we could set dy by dx equal to 0 and solve it, or we could simply just show that dy by dx equals 0 at 1, 1. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So, we know x equals 1 and y equals 1, dy by dx will equal 2 over 1 plus 1, subtract 1, which is 2 over 2, take away 1, which is, of course, 0. So 1, 1 is a stationary point. So example 5, here is our curve defined implicitly. And we've got to show that dy by dx is given by this result here. So differentiate with respect to x, term by term. Let's look at the terms that we've got to differentiate. y cubed has to be differentiated implicitly. xy is a product and will need to be differentiated implicitly. And then very simply, we have an x squared as the last part. So starting with y cubed, we get 3y squared dy by dx, and then need to apply the product rule here. So x is going to be u, or represent u, and y is going to represent v. So I'm going to start off by leaving u alone, so x is just x. Now differentiate y, which gives me dy by dx, and then swap around. So this time I'll differentiate the u part, which just gives me 1, and then I will leave the y part alone, which just gives me y. So 
The last part to this, of course, is differentiating the x squared, which gives me negative 2x at the end. Collecting like terms, 3y squared dy by dx minus x dy by dx is equal to y take away 2x. Factorise dy by dx, and we get this. And then dy by dx is equal to y take away 2x over 3y squared minus x. Now, hence show that the curve has a stationary point when x equals 1 8. So we know at stationary points, dy by dx equals 0. So we know y minus 2x over 3y squared minus x equals 0, which then gives me y minus 2x equals 0, or y equals 2x. Now I'm going to then substitute that into the original equation of the curve, and we will see what happens. So let's replace y on the equation of the curve with y in terms of x, which is 2x. So this then gives me 2x all cubed equals x multiplied by 2x minus x squared. Let's simplify this. We get 8x cubed equals 2x squared minus x squared. 8x cubed equals x squared. And let's subtract. So we have our equation is set equal to 0. I'm going to factorise out x squared and we're left with this. Now this then gives us x equals 0 but we're not really interested in that because the question just, shared, just said to us show that there is a stationary point at x equals 1 eighth. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to set 8x minus 1 equal to 0 and then that gives me x equals 1 eighth. So that tells us that when x equals 1 eighth, dy by dx is equal to 0, which then tells us there is a stationary point at x equals 1 eighth. So example 6. This time we have a curve defined implicitly, which involves an exponential function as well. And part 1, we've got to show that dy by dx is given by this result here. So let's differentiate this term by term with respect to x. So e to the 2y, it's an exponential function. It differentiates to an exponential function itself, e to the 2y. But we need to multiply by the derivative of this inner function, which is 2y. So that is 2 dy by dx. Now, on the right hand side, we then have x squared, which differentiates to 2x. And then we have y, which differentiates implicitly again to dy by dx. Now I'm going to collect the terms that contain dy by dx on the left and leave 2x on the right hand side. Let's factorize. And then let's divide. So dy by dx is equal to 2x over 2e to the 2y minus 1. Now, part 2. Hence find, to three significant figures, the coordinates of the point P where the curve has infinite gradient. Now, a slightly unusual question. The curve having infinite gradient means that we've got a denominator of 0. So at P, the denominator of dy by dx must equal 0. So that tells me that 2e to the 2y minus 1 equals 0, because dividing by 0 is how we get this infinite gradient. So let's rearrange this. So we get to this stage here. Take natural logs of both sides. So 2y equals ln of a half and y equals a half ln a half. So how do we then work out what x is? Well, we'll have to substitute back into this result over here. So 
we can work out what this value is as a decimal. So this gives me y equals minus 0.3465, we'll round it later. Store it in a calculator memory because then that makes it much easier to input back into this result over here. So we can then substitute in and this then gives us x squared which is equal to Naught point eight four six five dot dot dot, and this then gives me x is equal to naught point nine two zero zero dot dot dot. So we know at p, x is equal to naught point nine two zero, y is equal to negative naught point three four seven. Both values given to three significant figures. Let's look at example seven. We have a curve defined as follows, which has an asymptote to x equals a and a turning point, which is a minimum point we can see from the graph at p. Now, first of all, write down the value of a. Now, remember, asymptotes occur, vertical asymptotes occur, when we get a zero in the denominator, as we know dividing by zero causes problems. So we know at that asymptote, 2x minus 1, which is the denominator of the equation of the curve must equal zero, x is equal to a half, so this tells us that a equals a half, and this vertical asymptote has the equation x equals a half. Part two, we now have to show that dy by dx is equal to this result here, quite complex looking. So we need to differentiate this function. Now this is really interesting because of the way it is expressed y cubed equals x cubed over 2x minus 1. Now, we can differentiate both sides implicitly. The left-hand side would simply become 3y squared dy by dx, and the right-hand side we could simply differentiate using the quotient rule. So that could be a very feasible way of doing this. Alternatively, I can also say that y is the cube root of the right-hand side, and then just differentiate that using a combination of the quotient and chain rule. But looking at the answer, the answer contains a y squared as well as x terms. So that suggests to me that implicit differentiation is going to be the best way to do this. So we're going to differentiate both sides of this. Now, the left-hand side differentiates to give me 3y squared dy by dx. Now, the right-hand side doesn't have to be differentiated implicitly, but we do have to make use of the quotient rule to do this. So u is equal to x cubed, and du by dx is 3x squared, and v is equal to 2x minus 1, and dv by dx is equal to 2. Now, what does the quotient rule tell us? Do we remember? The quotient rule tells us that dy by dx is equal to v multiplied by du by dx subtract u multiplied by dv by dx all over v squared. So let's put the pieces of that together. So we need 2x minus 1 multiplied by 3x squared and we want to subtract from that x cubed multiplied by 2 and then the whole thing needs to be divided by v squared, which is 2x minus 1, all squared. Now, I'm just going to simplify the right-hand side, first of all. So this then gives me 6x cubed minus 3x squared minus 2x cubed, all divided by this 2x minus 1, all squared, in brackets, keeping on with my simplification, 4x cubed minus 3x squared over 2x minus 1, all squared. And remember, this is 3y squared dy by dx, so very simple to get to the final answer. dy by dx, we just divide by 3y squared, and we are there. There's our final answer. 
Now, hence find the coordinates of the turning point, P, giving the Y coordinate to three significant figures. So we need to set dy by dx equal to zero. So we know that at P, dy by dx is equal to zero. So 4x cubed minus 3x squared over 3y squared, 2x minus 1 all squared equals zero. Now the numerator must then equal zero. And I then factorize this. So this then gives me x equals 0, which is not p, so we reject that, or it gives me x is equal to 3 quarters. Now, how do I work out what y is? Well, I simply substitute back into this original equation, remembering that this will give me y cubed. So whatever result I get, I need to then cube root to get my value of y. So this gives me y equals 0.94494 dot dot dot, so 0.9453 sf.